Hi, this is your host Sabdin Bhartia and welcome to a special edition of TFR Insights for KubeCon which is focused on security and today we have with us once again William Morgan, CEO of Buoyant. William, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be back. Let's talk about a state of security in the cloud or you know Kubernetes space. Uh, as we discussed last time also that it's no longer an afterthought, but still, where is in the, the priorities for the companies when they are either building or deploying their applications in the cloud? Yeah, so it, you know it's almost weird to describe it on the priority list because it's something that under underpins you know every other decision, right? And security is one of those things where it's like a chain. You know, if you have one weak link, then it doesn't matter how strong the other links are. The chain as a whole is is weak. So I almost view it not as a as a priority, um, but as something that has to be in place for every other aspect of the business to be successful. Because if you don't have that, then it's just a matter of time until you run into a situation where you, you, you wish you weren't there. You not only serve a lot of customers, you also work with a lot of players in the ecosystem, a lot of you know companies who are evaluating or they are in different stages of their cloud and journey. According to your own you know, experience, how further they are when it comes to embracing zero trust as well as DevSecOps principles. Yeah, so it really is a wide range. You know, I think on, on and, and certainly in, in the Linkerd world, we see probably, uh, you know, the, the tip of the iceberg where the people who are adopting Linkerd are often pretty advanced, you know, in, in terms of their ability to uh, adopt new technology and their thinking around security. So we often see people who are pretty aware of, uh, of the idea of zero trust, um, you know, and, and how mutual TLS can help with that. Um, on the other hand, we also do see a fair number of adopters who, you know, maybe they get that for the Kubernetes world, but they have, a, you know, a pretty substantial uh, non-Kubernetes, you know, or legacy uh, component where it's much harder to answer those questions, much, much, hard, much more of a challenge uh, to address the, the zero trust model in that world. Also, uh, I just want, I know you want to uh, talk specifically about service mesh. I just want to, since you know, that's your security is your background, I do want to know when we do look at a cloud native security, what are the uh, what are the factors that create security issue? Of course, bugs are obviously there and bugs are part of software development, so you cannot get rid of them that easily. Second is configuration, misconfigurations. What else is there that you consider as a security issue? Yeah, so certainly bugs, you know, and, and configuration are great ones, especially since uh, those are both human factors, right? We can't we can't talk about uh, computer security without realizing that, you know, a huge source of any vulnerability are are the very failure prone humans in the loop. Um, I think you know the, the other thing that kind of makes this a little uh, more pressing in the cloud native world is that for many folks, this is the first time that you are actually running software in the cloud, which means it's not under your physical control, right? These machines are someone else's machines. The network is someone else's network. And in fact, you're running these, uh, you know, you're running your software on in these multi-tenant environments where there might be something else that you have no control over that is also running on the same uh, hardware. So having some kind of control, you know, is, is necessary. And since we cannot do that in the hardware world, Right? We can't own the machines anymore. We can't put them in the data center and have the armed guard outside or whatever it was. We now have to address those concerns through software. What direct impact security has on the release of new features and updates? Do, because sometimes, uh, according to a lot of reports, uh, companies don't push out updates or features because of security issues. Yeah, so ideally it, it shouldn't, right? The whole point, you know, just like with reliability, the idea is that Ideally, you should be able to ship features as rapidly as possible without having security be a burden. And in fact, I think that's really important to do because if security is a burden, then that's when it gets overlooked. That's when it gets pushed, you know, kind of under swept under the rug or pushed into the corner. So it's really important to have these processes set up where even when you're operating as rapidly as you can, you are still making things secure and reliable. 
Yeah, so uh, what are some of the biggest security concerns that you see that modern organizations face, especially when it comes to uh, cloud native, especially because of this uh, pandemic, the crisis, a lot of organizations are moving towards cloud and they're embracing all those things. So suddenly uh, the factors that were not part of their uh, security, now suddenly they are. So talk about uh, the, the, the challenges and concerns they have today. Yeah, so I think the biggest one, you know, you hit the nail on the head early on, it's around complexity. This is all fairly new technology. It's all, you know, built to be these very flexible, very powerful platforms. And with that flexibility comes a whole lot of, and, and with the like platform mindset comes a whole lot of complexity. And that's really where things go wrong, right? That's where it just takes one little error to leave this vulnerability open. You know, even if the underlying software can be secure, it's often not set up in a way that it's actually secure. And that's that's a hard challenge, you know, it's, it's, it's not something that can be solved uh, purely through software, although I, I think that if you have a focus on the simplicity in the software itself, you can actually help things uh, a fair amount. Uh, before we wrap this up, we talked about problem areas, we talked about potential solutions area. What is Boyan doing in this, you know, to help companies kind of secure their apps, workloads, environments? Yeah, so for us, uh, you know, the primary focus is around the service mesh and mutual TLS and, and ways of uh, ensuring not just, you know, encryption of data in transit, but also the val validity, the authenticity of the endpoints on either side, right? So mutual TLS means not only, you know, is A talking to B and A knows that B is actually B, right? And B knows who, that A is actually A, um, and that, that, but that identity is validated as part of making that connection. And that is kind of the foundation of, you know, kind of almost everything else you want to do in that space, whether it's around policy and enforcement of, you know, who can talk to whom or, or, or certain headers, um, or whether it's just having a, uh, you know, just a kind of a, a framework where, you know, if a bad guy does get into the network, you have these kind of basic mechanisms in place um, so that they can't get access to that data, whether it's PCI data or HIPAA data or simply sensitive data. Uh, William, thank you so much for taking time out today from your schedule and talk about security in uh, cloud native and service mesh space. And I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you. Thank you.